Okay, hey guys, I'm going to be uh, actually getting into some of the numbers here when we talk about charges. So, uh, let's talk first about um, uh, an electron. Okay, an electron, okay, E, okay, has a, a specific charge, okay, and uh, some of the people that work to find this um, are a gentleman named uh, Robert Milliken and uh, Mr. Fletcher, and uh, they actually established a value for the electron. So the value for the electron was uh, 1.6 uh, times 10 to the negative 19th um, coulombs. Now, okay, so coulombs now we know is a, uh, is a, a unit for charge. And we know now that the electron has a charge of uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. One important factor I forgot to put for you is that it's a negative charge. Okay, so that's a negative charge. So, look, that's a tiny number. Um, and that, that shows us the, that the electron itself has a very small charge. Um, now, the, the proton... Okay, there's a lot of uh, different ways to write protons. Uh, we just call a proton a, uh, a negative electron, which uh, I'm sorry, a positive electron, which is a positive charge. Well, the cool thing is that a proton actually carries the same charge. Okay, it carries a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Now, a coulomb is just a measure of charge. Okay, so um, we're gonna be getting into some of the the um, the measurements and then some of the conversions here, and you're gonna see this on I think it's page 19 of your notes. Uh, but I'm going to give you um, some of the terminology. So if we look at uh, something um, MC, okay, that's a a milli coulomb. And we look at something called, um, okay, it looks almost looks like a U. Um, this is called a micro coulomb. And then we get into something uh, N, C. This is a nano coulomb. So now um, this can, you can get this information on, uh, I think it's, like I said, page 19 of the notes. Um, now, the reason we use these prefixes is because, uh, you know, electric charges are going to be uh, very small in nature. So milli, okay, is equal, is equal to uh, 10 to, uh, so times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, anytime we see this term, we're going to times 10 to the negative 6th. And anytime I see that this term here, it's going to be times 10 to the negative ninth. Okay. So in the, in the text, what you're going to have to look for, uh, in the problems is the, are these, uh, prefixes. So if it, for instance, okay, if I have something that says, uh, 10 micro coulombs, okay, we can rewrite this and get it in our calculators as 10. Now we know uh, this in this is times 10 to the negative sixth coulombs. Okay, so I'll give you another example. Let's say I have something that says uh, we have a charge of, uh, of negative six uh, nano coulombs. Well, if it has a charge of negative six nano coulombs, that's the same thing as saying negative six times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs. So all we're doing is we're just making, they're just making it easier for you to write this number. And in the calculator, okay, you guys know that um, to get the, uh, the exponent, uh, it might look like this, 10 E negative six. Uh, to get this, it might be negative six E negative nine. Okay, so in the calculator, uh, you know, your E button is your exponent button. Uh, it could be either written as this, 
uh, the exponent button, or sometimes it's uh, a double E. Remember uh, that EXP just means times 10 to the, and this also means times 10 to the, okay? So there's a, a brief intro to the prefixes. And again, you can find uh, this uh, in the notes as well. Okay, so I'd like to also mention <clears throat> the fact that uh, the cool thing is that let's say I were to, were to get a sphere, right? And, and I were to charge it up. And let's say I came up with a charge of 6 or negative 6 um, micro coulombs. Okay, that means that, all right, first of all, this has a bunch more negative uh, charges on it. So it's negatively charged. And we've charged it to six micro coulombs. Now, here's the cool thing. Uh, I always thought this was pretty cool, and I think you have a couple examples in your um, in your reading, and also in the in the questions that um, it asks you. It says, "Hey, well, tell us how many electrons." So I'm gonna write I'm gonna write the question down. How many extra electrons are on the surface so the question seems daunting doesn't it in reality well hey listen if I've got the charge the total charge uh, excess charge of negative six micro coulombs well I can actually pretty simply solve for the number of electrons okay because I know that the that the charge per electron is this. Okay, so so look. They say uh, here it is six micro coulombs, which by the way uh, is written as negative six times ten to the negative sixth um, uh, coulombs. That way we can get rid of that 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 nasty little prefix there, and use actual numbers. Um, well. I'll tell you what, if we know that uh, we want to go from coulombs to electrons, okay, we multiply by something here. So look, if I know that in one electron, there are negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, hey, look what I've done. If I divide here, this is division, this is multiplication. If I divide this by this, okay, um, you can get your answer. Okay, I'm not going to solve for the answer here, but this will give you like a, a really, really large number of electrons that are on this surface. Okay, um, the only reason I'm not solving is because I don't have a calculator at hand. You guys can easily solve by dividing this by this. And coming up with the extra number of electrons on the surface. Okay, since this uh, video is supposed to be starting to look at something called Coulomb's Law, um, all I'm going to do here is spend the next minute and a half uh, describing what the law is. Uh, and then next video, we'll talk a bit about how to get the calculations done. Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. You remember gravitation? All right, so we said that... Um, in gravitation, we said that the force of gravity is equivalent to, uh, remember, the gravitational constant times mass 1 times mass 2 over the radius squared, and that was the distance between the centers of the two objects. Remember that? Well, turns out that the electrostatic force, we'll call it Fe, electrostatic force, has a similar uh, comparable equation. So we are actually going to be looking at charges q1 q2 instead of masses and we're going to be looking at uh still radiuses and here okay we're going to um be looking at something called uh and i'll write it out for you this is coulomb's constant now, remember here, this was called the 
gravitational constant. Okay, gravitational constant and Coulomb's constant. Um, they both are uh, a constant. That's I mean, the con term constant means they stay the same. This is just a fudge factor. This is to get this to work. So the Coulomb's constant is a lot larger. I'll put it down here, and you guys can see on, um, I think it's on page 73 of the notes, but you'll be able to see that. Uh, Coulomb's constant is a much larger number than the gravitational constant, and, the, and that number is uh, 9 times 10 to the 9th uh, Newton meters squared per uh, Coulomb squared. Okay, so this number, you're focusing on that number. Well, that is a constant. That's the same here. That's going to plug in a K value. But look at the similarities between these two formulas. All right, so that went 11 minutes, about a minute longer than I wanted to. Uh, but <clears throat> just to introduce you to it, we'll look at that. Next video, we'll be looking at some of the uh, calculations involved.